Okay, here's something about the pilgrim setting foot on Plymouth Rock and the Liberty Man as written in the commentaries of the laws of the ancient Hebrews. It goes like this. In, in Eastern fable, the world is a harp. Its strings are earth, air, fire, flood, life, death, and mind. At certain periods, an angel flying through the heavens strikes the harp. Its vibrations are those mighty issues of good and evil which mark the destiny of our race. At one time, tempests, earthquakes, war, famine, and pestilence follow the mystical touch. At another, all nature is dressed in smiles and roses. The earth is covered with waving grass and luxuriant harvests. The fields are happy with bloom and the air is filled with fragrance. Rich flocks and herbs crown the hilltops and spread themselves out over into the valleys, and laughter rings out its merry peals on the glad ear of hope. The mystical harp was touched when the pilgrim set foot on Plymouth Rock. Its quivering strings discoursed their most eloquent music. The burden of the notes was human liberty, human brotherhood, human rights, the sovereignty of the people, the supremacy of law over will, the divine right of man to govern himself. The strain is still prolonged in vibrations of ever-widening roads. The great birth of that era is practical liberty, liberty based on the principles of the gospel, liberty fashioned into symmetry and beauty and strength by the molding power of Christianity. Liberty which places sovereignty in the hands of the people and then sends them to the Bible that they may learn how to wear the crown. And what a birth! Already is the infant grown into a giant liberty man. As he exists today among us, that is secured by constitutional guarantees and impregnated with gospel principles.